Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. All right, and I wanted to get into a topic, all right, of the remnant, all right, who will be gathered in the latter days, all right, uh, will be gathered by the Holy Spirit, all right, and there is no scripture, all right, that speaks upon them using or needing a DNA test to prove their ancestry, all right? Remember, the records have been lost, okay? So ultimately, we need a high priest with Urim and Thurim, all right, that will shed light on these things, and that will be through the Holy Spirit, Rahakwadash, which that's sent from the Most High God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, all right, via the Rahakwadash, the Spirit Holy or the Holy Spirit. So when these particular Ish people, okay, Vocab Malone, which we believe him to be one, Dr. Brown, James White, and a lot of these uh, people who call themselves, uh, like you see here, Ashkenazi uh, Jew, which an Ashkenazi Jew is someone who is claiming to be of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, but claiming that their forefathers were Jews who were in the land of Germany, all right, Turkey, French, and these other different places, man, all right, Ashkenazi was the son of Japheth, Okay, Ashkenaz, right? So, you can't be Japhetic and Shemitic. All right, when they say that they're Ashkenazi Jews, they're saying that they're able to trace their ancestry back, all right, to the Jews, all right, who were in Germany in these various different areas, okay? So, what we were going to speak on today through the Holy Spirit is ultimately the remnant were never prophesied to need a DNA test to prove that they're Israelites, okay? Because again, when these individuals see us teaching, all right, one of the things they always bring up, which Dr. Brown and uh, Alizar had a debate, and Dr. Brown brought up, okay, the fact that ultimately we don't have DNA tests. They have DNA tests that can prove their, all right, Hebrew Israelite ancestry which they don't call themselves Hebrew Israelites. They call themselves just the Jews, which ultimately Jew can be short for Judah, which is, you know, Jacob's fourth son, one of the tribes of Israel, the tribe that Yahweh Shai, all right, eventually, you know, sprang out of, all right, or it can be short for, all right, the southern kingdom, which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay? So they don't even have that understanding. And when the Jews will be gathered in the latter days, all right, it will be a fulfillment of the tabernacle of David being rebuilt. So that would be all 12 tribes, both Judah and Ephraim, or Judah and Israel, as the scriptures say, all right, southern and northern kingdom, okay, the two witnesses, okay, that's how we will be gathered to close the breaches, all right, and the remnant be gathered. All right, which the remnant starts with the 144,000, okay? And you also have a large multitude that are going to be gathered from all of these various different nations, kindreds, all right, and tongues and people, man, all right, because we've been scattered. So, all right, we're going to start here in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, okay, because the Holy Spirit being placed upon us in these latter days has given us insight on what's to come and through that all right we can walk by faith all right so the holy spirit was sent from on high all right into the minds of the servants the prophets to teach this word and as it says many would see all right the new song being sung they would hear it and they would dance to the to tune all right because they would start to fear the lord and be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise themselves. All right, so this is the book of Revelation 11 now. In this chapter, verse 8, all right, describes the Israelites being in a dead state as dead bodies lying in the street, 
of the great city, the dry bones. This is Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. All right. Uh, pretty much he's saying it in his own way. Okay. Ezekiel saw dry bones lying in a, in a, in a valley. All right. Revelation 11 and 8. The dead bodies lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay. And the people would make fun of us, make money off of us. We would be in a dead state. But the point is Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. So this is where we are now, where we have stood on our feet. All right. The breath has been breathed into us from on high which is uh, ultimately the Holy Spirit Spirit via the Comforter, okay, gives us understanding. We've been comforted with the understanding. Now we're walking towards the very next verse, okay? And that's how we would learn and understand we were Israelites. The Heavenly Father would put the understanding on particular men on earth, okay? As the scriptures say, thy eyes shall see thy teachers, and they shall give you the way that you shall walk in. Okay, nowhere in the process of the Israelites awakening and prophecy is a DNA test required. So how do we know that we're Israelites? All right, via the Holy Spirit of promise. All right, and that's what we're going to get into. Because to boast in a DNA test shows that you're not the people of the Lord. Again, nowhere in prophecy, all right, do we see the Heavenly Father requiring a Hebrew Israelite DNA test all right, for the remnant to be able to identify that they're Israelites. All right, we are a spiritual people. Okay, and we understand that we would been we've been quickened by the Spirit. Okay, again, the flesh profited nothing. All right, for so so for all of these particular scholars who keep bringing up this DNA test talk. Okay, it, it further proves that they're not the children of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, so again. Revelation 11 and 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life, all right, from the most high entered into them. And they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on them, which saw them. And we're witnessing that great fear. That's why they have to, what, lean on their carnal things. They boasted in all of these, these, these DNA tests and this and that. You don't have this. You didn't do that. Y'all didn't keep these traditions here. Well, ultimately, we were scattered and broken. OK, clearly in prophecy, there was a period of time where the Israelites were dry bones. OK, Hosea, the third chapter. OK, the, the children of Israel shall abide many days without a sacrifice, without a king, without an ephod. Meaning we wouldn't have access. You see, now we have access through the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of life from on high that has entered into us. So what happens next after the Israelites awaken? All right. Verse 12 says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. All right. So this is the great deliverance that's to come. All right. Now, does this happen 10 seconds after they stand up on their feet and great fear falls upon their enemies? No. This is the process of walking in the spirit, being sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. OK, so that we can walk the straight gate via this grace period, man. OK. And again, let's get the book of Isaiah, the 44th chapter. I always get this. All right. Isaiah 44. And one. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I've chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Okay, and what is that water? The water is the word. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures say, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That water will be used to what? Be poured upon the elect, the believers. And that's the spirit. And floods upon the dry ground. He reiterates. And the dry ground is the dry bones. The Israelites in the dead state. 
okay? Because pursuant to prophecy, we would definitely be in a dead state, okay? Again, let's get that in the book of uh, Hosea, the uh, third chapter, okay? Hosea, the third chapter, and the fourth verse. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. All of those things are, uh, are associated with the priesthood. You see? There will be a point where we wouldn't have the understanding. All right? We would just go through a period of being judged. Okay? And that's that three days and a half spoken of in Revelation 11. Okay? After three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. You see? So... That has led to what? Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, all right, and David their king, and shall fear Yahweh in his goodness in the latter days. All right, and that's what we're doing as we're walking in the spirit, right? And that's going to lead to what we read in Revelation 11 where we ascend up into the heavens, all right? A DNA test is nowhere in the in the in the <laughs> in the talking of how we will wake up. So let's go. Isaiah 44 and 3. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, all right, and floods upon the dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Okay? And the blessing is the understanding that we've received. And they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses. Okay, if you know anything about willows, or they spring up fast when they're when they're near water. The water is the word, the Holy Spirit, okay, and the camps, the different Israelites, the believers, the remnant you see being raised up, which not every member of the camp is of the elect, all right, but the hundred percent truth, all right, is out here. The truth that's gonna be needed for the elect to be gathered will be out here and that's how the lord will pour all right the uh, the water up on the dry grounds okay as a matter of fact let's get the book of um let's get isaiah 30 we quoted it but let's get it isaiah 30 and 20 and though the lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Ye shall also defile the covering of thy graven images of silver, and thy ornaments of gold, and the molten images, and I shall cast them away as a mistress cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, get thee hence. Why would we do that? Because we would hear the correct teachings and we would throw away the idols. It would be a spiritual thing. It wouldn't be something that we would have to go to the, the, the institutions of this world to get understanding. It would be something that happened in spirit. Okay, Baruch, the second chapter. Okay, and we're going to jump down to 29. If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. All right. And we were judged for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. See, that's how we would remember them ourselves. All right. How would it happen? Let's let's listen. And shall know that I am the Lord their God, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. The Lord will give us, all right, a mind and ears to hear. See that? He would give it to us via the Holy Spirit. We would not have to go to the institutions of this world. All right? The records have been lost. All right? Everything, we've been scattered. All right? The great awakening would take place via the Spirit. Okay, we can't go to a particular uh, DNA, which who owns these DNA uh, testing centers? It's a big scam. Okay. 
Now, you can use uh, a DNA to see who the father of a child is, maybe. All right. But to say I'm linked to the ancient Hebrew Israelites and Jews and this and this and that, the, the, the Bible never spoke of that. Okay. The Lord would give us, right, a heart and ears to hear. All right. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. They shall remember themselves. See, that's how we would come to the understanding that we're Israelites. And this is how we know, all right, when you have particular brothers and sisters who look like the other nations coming back to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai in sincerity and truth, that they're Israelites. Because again, what does the scripture say? The flesh profited nothing. Okay, it is the spirit that quickened it. Let's get that real quick. The book of John 66 and 63. John 6 and 63. All right, call hello, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahshai. For it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, how are those words being speaking or spoken unto us as Israelites in these latter days? It's via the Holy Spirit. It's sent from on high. Okay, and through that, now we know the mystery of his will. And we'll get to that. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a, a heavy thing that's happening on the planet Earth with the gathering of the elect. Okay, but through that, he would raise up teachers. Okay. And from the time that we, we, we would receive that Holy Spirit and he would give us a mind and ears to hear, okay, we would praise the Lord in the land of our captivity and think upon his name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds for they should remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord, all right? And then I will bring them again to the land which I promised with the oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords over it, all right? And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people, and I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. So there you go, okay? We're going to be entered into the second covenant, all right? But first, all right, we're going to what? praise him in the land of our captivity as the heathen are trying to boast in what they're going to do okay we're going to return from our stick neck stick stiff necks as the world is all based upon sin and evil okay we're preaching against it and walking in a way totally opposite which puts us in the, in, in 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 a very difficult place we would what let's read this isaiah 30 and 22 in the NLT, it says, then once you once you see your teachers, then will you destroy all your silver idols and your precious gold images. You will throw them away like filthy rags, saying unto them, good riddance. And that's the idols we once follow. Easter, Halloween, Christmas. All right. Fraternities, all of the, 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 the garbage that we learned in this world, we would turn from it through a spiritual awakening. OK, so let's go back. To Isaiah 44 and 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as the grass, all right, as, as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am Yahweh. Another shall call himself by the name Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. And this does not mean, IUIC, that you got to go and legally change your last name to Ben Israel, which is Yiddish. You dudes are something else, man. This is saying that when we woke up, all right, we would turn back to Yahweh Bashim Shai and put on our true identity as Israelites. Nowhere is a DNA test a part of this. It would be through the teaching of the word, okay? Psalms 40. And three, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in Yahweh. See that? The new song, the teaching of the word, okay, which the servants, the prophets will go out and do, 
as they've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise according to their measure, okay, many, all right, would see and hear them teaching and preaching the new song in fear and trust in the Lord. That's how it's happening. That's why the book of Ephesians says this. Ephesians 4, okay, through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, and now he's on the right-hand side, the Holy Spirit can be sent down in the form of a gift according to the, 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 the measure and the grace period that we have, okay? We're all given a gift. Let's read it. Ephesians 4 and 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach, all right? And that will be dispersed this way, all right? Verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers, all right? Showing you we're, we're, we're still teaching. We have to teach for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach, Yahweh until we all come into the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, all right? We're not that perfect man yet. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. Let's read this in the uh, NLT, okay? Till we continue, this will continue. We will continue to teach and preach until we all come to such unity in our faith in the knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Hamashiach. All right? And again, the scripture says, glory to glory. Okay? So the, 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 the Holy Spirit, okay, will be sent after three days and a half. This is what, from 1619 to around the, the 60s, okay, there was really no open vision. Okay? And around that time, the Lord started to, you know, uh, the, the, the bones started to come together, but eventually he would send the spirit, the true understanding, the spirit of life from on high, which was on high, the holy of holies. Okay, now, how, what, how did we get this access? When Yahweh Shai, okay, when Yahweh Shai gave up the ghost, Matthew 27 and 50, Yahweh Shai when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the Holy Spirit, right? The Spirit, it says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, all right, and the rocks rent, all right? The veil in the temple rent, all right, which the veil, all right, separated the different parts of the temple from the Holy of Holies, which the high priest could enter into only once a year for our atonement, right? When Yahweh Shai gave up the ghost, which we know he eventually raised from the dead, okay, that rent, all right, the veil of the temple, all right, and gave access, all right, to all 12 tribes, starting with the elect, okay? Now, we have access to the Holy of Holies via Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who was on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father. Even uh, that scripture we just read in Ephesians, right? The way that that happened, okay? The way that we receive this uh, Holy Spirit, all right, is that Yahweh Shai would have to, all right, descend into the lower parts of the earth all right and then ascend back up into the, the spiritual realm the right hand side of the father now he can act as high priest in the heavens we're no longer bound to the temple we're no longer bound to the the the, the, the levitical priesthood all right we now have access all right through his blood all right which has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise, which we're going to get to that. Okay? Let's go here to the book of 2 Corinthians. Okay? Let's NLT this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. All right? And 15. 
All right. Let's see here. It says, yes, even today when they read Moses, Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. All right. They still have a blockage. Okay. <laughs> but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. All right. Because you have access. For, where the, for, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay. Freedom from that first covenant through this grace period. That's why it says in the King James, let's get it. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, which is sent from on high, there is liberty. Liberty is grace. Okay? So the Holy Spirit has given us the understanding on what's to come and given us a reason to praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and walk by faith. You see that? We now have the freedom to serve the Lord, all right, without worrying about the technicalities of that first covenant. Okay? So all of us who have had the veil removed, all right, can see and, ref and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed to his glorious image. All right. And it says what? From glory to glory. Okay. Verse 18 in the King James. But we all with open face beholden as in a glass in the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So it's from glory to glory, from the point we've received the Holy Spirit, all right, of promise, okay? And what, what, do, I, what do I mean by the Holy Spirit of promise? Let's get the book of, let's see here. Let's, uh, what I'll do, let me see. Boom. Ephesians 1. All right. As a matter of fact, let's uh let's start at uh man. Man, this is a holy this is a holy chapter. <laughs> I start at uh 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai to himself. So those of us who are waking up, all right, in these latter days, coming back to the understanding that we're, that we're Israelites, all right, some of us are of the very number that were handpicked by the Lord in the heavens to be here on earth, all right, as vessels to fulfill what he wrote, okay? But that would be a process before we were fully brought back to him, all right? having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he have made us accepted in the beloved, all right, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Okay, so that blood that was shed, all right, remember it led to the, the, the temple, the, the veil in the temple being rent, all right, it gives us access all right, to the Holy Spirit of promise, as we're going to show you. All right, now we can go from glory to glory with this understanding. We don't need no damn DNA test. Okay, it will be all a spiritual process. This is why they can't put their hands on it. Okay, again, real quick, let's get the book of uh, John, the 14th chapter. Okay, John 14 and 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. All right. And I will I will pray the father, the role of the Holy Spirit. I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. Okay. 
Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, and ye shall live also. So what is he saying? Look, I'm going to go back to the Father, okay? But I'm going to walk with you and be with you through the Holy Spirit. And the world can't receive this talking point. The world can't receive that we, we've literally woken up through the Spirit. You see? And this was fulfilled in the book of Acts, the second chapter. All right. But this also is happening now as he told his disciples that they were going to teach and preach in the uttermost parts of the world, which is over here in the Americas, man. OK. John 14 and 25. These things have I spoken unto you being present with you, but the comforter. OK. The comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. See, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. He didn't give us a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of cars, or the, 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 the fame and all of these various different things the world deems of importance. He gave us the Holy Spirit. See? I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, because this understanding, this Holy Spirit I'm sending you, is going to lead you unto immortality. That's why the scriptures say wisdom, all right? Wisdom. Let's just type in immortality. Wisdom leads to immortality. Okay? Boom. Wisdom of Solomon 8, okay, and 17. Now, when I consider these things in myself and ponder them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. Okay? Let's see here. Boom. Verse 13. Moreover, by means of her, wisdom, shall I obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial that shall come after me. Okay? So ultimately, uh, wisdom, all right, leads to immortality. Okay? When we receive the Holy Spirit from on high, we started the process of immortality. It's a form of, 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 of spiritual power that's going to lead to something even greater. Now we have a foresight of what's to come. You see, and we didn't get that through uh, 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 anything Esau created. We got that through the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're the spirit, the children of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Now it says, let's read it again, Ephesians one and six, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He have made us accepted in the beloved. Through what? The Holy Spirit, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, okay, according to the riches of his grace, all right, Where, wherein he have abounded towards us all wisdom and prudence. See, he's given us wisdom and prudence to walk, okay, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Yahweh Shai, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. All of us are going to be gathered. Okay? It says, and we're going to be what? Resurrected back to our original estate. Okay? It says... In, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, starting with this wisdom, okay? The breath of life, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Yahweh Shai, first trusted in Yahweh Shai, <laughs> all right? And that happened in the heavens, right? In, who, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. Now, how did we hear the word of truth? Through the Holy Spirit. But again, that would be through men preaching the word, singing the new song. 
Let's read this again. And whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? Let's see what this says in the NLT. And now ye Gentiles have also heard the truth. All right, which the Gentiles or the Israelites who were what? Scattered, okay, fell into idol worship, but heard the word and turned back to the Lord. That's the same thing we're doing, okay? The Gentile, the story of the Gentiles is your story, all of you, okay? None of us grew up, all right, circumcised in the sense that now we may have been physically circumcised by the penis. Some of our parents may have got us circumcised, but... In a, in a sense of being cultivated in the ways of the law, statutes, commandments, knowing and understanding all right, that we're, the kingdom is coming, the, 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 the sons of God and Yahweh Shai, the names. We, we didn't know all of that. We had to come out of darkness and be brought into light. Okay? The blessing of Abraham. It says, and now you Gentiles have also heard the word of truth, the good news. Okay? that God saves you and when you believed in Hamashiach he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago now didn't we just read in John the 14th chapter all right didn't we read all the way back in Isaiah okay Revelation uh, Baruch okay uh, uh, Hosea that the Holy Spirit would be sent Okay, it's the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, right? Until the redemption of the purchased possession, right? Until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory, all right? So again, when you read, let's go back to Revelation 11. Revelation 11 chapter in the 11 verse, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them. And they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on them which saw them. Us standing up on our feet is being set in order. Okay? Set them in order. The book of Psalms 50. Okay? Psalms 50 and 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, Esau. But I will reprove thee. And set them in order before thine eyes. Okay? I will set them in order before thine eyes. Okay? Let's get another precept. Okay? Isaiah 29 and 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abram concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall now not be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. We wouldn't be in that docile weak yes or master that spirit is done but when he seeth his children the work of mine hands in the midst of him they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the holy one of jacob and shall fear the lord and they that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine okay and that's what's happening via the holy spirit all right which is the earnest of our inheritance Okay, it's the beginning, all right, it's the beginning of us being brought back to the Heavenly Father fully, okay? An example is here in Galatians, all right? Let's get the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, okay? So we're going through that process. Now that we've received the Holy Spirit, we have to offer up a sacrifice, okay? And again, no DNA test is a part of that. We know we're Israelites through the Holy Spirit, through, the, through our faith. Our faith shows forth that we are Israelites. We're doing what the scripture said the Israelites would do. All right, now let's read this in the, the, uh, the uh, NLT. Okay, Galatians 4, all right, and 1. Think of it this way, all right? Now, this was speaking of us leaving off, all right, from the first covenant into grace, 
but it still applies, all right, as now that we receive grace in the Holy Spirit, all right, we're walking towards that perfection. It says, think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better than slaves until they grow up. See, and we're in that growing up process until we get to that full image. We're going from glory to glory, even though they actually own everything their father had. Okay. King James. It says, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, different, nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. So, yeah. All right. The kingdom is ours. Okay. But guess what? All right. We still have to do our part. All right. We still have to do our part, man. Let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Okay. The spirit itself bears uh, witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. See, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. All right. That's all we need. Okay. The flesh profited nothing. The fact that we're calling on Yahweh Bashim Shai, you're watching these videos, we're going out on the highways and the byways with other brothers, okay? The remnant is waking up, okay? Ain't that what was promised? See? Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Restoration promised. Deuteronomy 30 and 1, and it shall come to pass when all these things are are come upon thee the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations whether the Lord God have driven thee now it's all coming together that's why precept upon precept is, is very important thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all I commanded thee this day thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul then the Lord will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee and will return and gather thee from all nations, whether the Lord thy God have scattered thee. If any be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And that all uh, happens and starts with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the promise was that we would ultimately wake up from these various different places we were scattered, okay, and walk in a particular way and obey obey the Lord to the best of our ability whether we be scattered so the spirit itself okay which the words that I speak to you there is spirit in their life the book itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so for you brothers and sisters out there who are looking at how you look and you, you're scared and depressed or what if my dad's dad 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 was an Edomite or a Moabite or whatever look the spirit within you is proof enough okay that's our DNA test the spirit right the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High and if children then heirs heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai if so be that we suffer with him that we may be all so glorified together so we still have to suffer with him while we have this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in an ungodly world, okay, that's a straight gate. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to, can be, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All right? The, the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Okay? For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. For the creature, all right, and that's what we, the, the creation itself, all right, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God because everything is out of order with our fall. And that's what we had to learn, all right, through uh, uh, this, this fall and now we're being raised back up again, okay, that we got to be in order. In order for this whole thing called earth to function in its right capacity, the sons of God got to be on top. So we're on our way back to the top. Yahweh Shah is already there. Right? The creature was made subject to vanity. Okay? So everything is yearning 
for the, 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 the sons of God to be put back in their rightful order. Right? The creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected, subjected the same in hope. The Lord wanted us to hope, to have faith, to get the kingdom. He didn't just freely give us everything. We had to work for it as obedient sons. Again, all right, though you, all of these things belong to you, all right, you can't receive the inheritance except you walk by faith, okay? It says, so the Lord subjected us to hope, okay? Because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God to where we can exercise dominion on earth, have new bodies, okay? In LT, the creation look forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. See, we are we free from death and decay right now? No. You get older and older by the day. We, we, we could all uh, just not wake up. Death still is, 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 is pretty much, you know, a uh, uh, burden in us. Okay? For we know that the whole creation groaneth in travail and pain together unto now. All right? It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, because everything is decayed. All right? Which have the first fruits of the spirit, okay? The elect, <laughs> all right? The elect, okay, who've been but sealed with the, the, the Holy Spirit of promise, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, okay? Let's put this all in, uh, in LT real quick. Verse 24. It says, uh, I start at 23, and we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of the future glory. See that? For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait eagerly, all right? Wait with eager hope for the day when the Most High will give us our full rights as adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved, all right? We were given this hope when we received the Holy Spirit, right? If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it, all right? See that? If we already had the new covenant, if we already had the new bodies, why in the hell would we have to hope for it? But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And that's where you have to walk by faith. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we didn't know that God wants us. We, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us, all right, with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Even these videos that we do. Okay, you may sometimes have it planned out. I'm gonna go into this today, to that. But but a lot of times it's you 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 move by the spirit, and even those videos you do, it's ultimately the Holy Spirit working through you to do those videos, even when you plan them out, when you pray. Okay, and the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. So that's a comfort. That's the comfort we've received. Okay. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And ultimately, okay, we're going to return to our first estate as those first fruit spirits chosen. Okay. And ultimately, the remnant is going to be gathered in their order, the first fruits, and then those who are Yahweh Shai's that is coming. Okay? So let's go to the book. We already read Ephesians. Okay, let's go to the book of uh, Romans, the fourth chapter. All right? Man. 
what's uh in Paul's writings are good to read in the uh NLT. All right. Remember uh what did what did Peter say about Paul speaking of things that sometimes they can trip people up. Okay? Romans 4 and 12. And Abram or Abraham is also the spiritual father of those who have been circumcised but only if they have the same kind of faith Abraham had before he was circumcised clearly God's promises to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants all right and who was that through Isaac and Jacob all right was based not on his obedience to God's law but unto a right relationship that comes by faith so again if you're understanding why you as an Israelite are here Again, the Lord told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, I'm going to make your seed as innumerable as the sands of the sea. Through Isaiah, we understand, but only a remnant is going to return. That's a remnant of that seed. Okay, that remnant is going to be justified ultimately by predestination, but they're going to walk in faith. See, the faith of Abraham. Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not, based not on his obedience to the law, but on a right relationship with the Most High that comes by faith. If God's promises is only to those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promises is pointless. So we have to walk by faith. All right, let's get that. We walk by faith. Okay. And not by sight. Man, which this whole chapter is bad. <laughs> you know, we have faith. Now the Lord has given us the ability to know and understand we're getting those new bodies. We're going to rule the world under Yahweh Shai. Sin will never uh, have any dominion over us again. All right? A righteous kingdom is coming. The heathen will be our footstool. Okay? He's, he's given us the ability to know and believe it. Like Noah. Okay? When you when you get the book of uh, Genesis, the uh, let's see Genesis the sixth chapter. Right, Genesis six and seven, and the Lord said, "I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for repented me that I have made them." But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How? Because the Lord showed him what was to come, which gave him the ability to build the ark. See? Now we know what's coming. We're building, all right, the spiritual temple through the Holy Spirit, man. Okay? Look what he told him. Verse uh, 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, and the earth is filled with uh, violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms, uh, uh, room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without the pitch. So the Lord gave him grace. During his grace period, what did he do? Okay? He walked by faith. Okay? Hebrews 11 and 7, by faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High, of things not as uh, seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark by the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. See that? Now we are ultimately uh, 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 going to be heirs of righteousness by faith. Okay? 1 Peter 3 and 20, which were sometimes disobedient, once the long servant of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, wherein a few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Okay, but now how are we saved? The like figure or two, even baptism does now also save us. We're baptized by the Holy Spirit, the washing of the water by the word, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards the Lord, the Most High, by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, who was going into heaven is on, on the right hand of the Most High. God, um, the Most High God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. You see that? 
So he he's already there. All right, we're trying to get there. We're trying to get our vow body changed, which is what Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, is going into. Okay. Second Corinthians five and one. For we know that this, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is in heaven. If so, be that uh, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For in this tabernacle we groan, being burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon with mortality, that mortality might be swallowed up by life. Okay, now he that wrought us the self same thing as the most high and has given us the earnest of the spirit. Okay, the ability to believe. Okay, the Holy Spirit of promise, all right, sends us on a path leading to immortality. Okay, it says, let's see here. Verse eight, yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the lord all right so whether we uh let's see here let's see it says um yes we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the lord all right okay this is i'm tripping Verse uh, four, while we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies. All right. That clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. You see. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he's given us his Holy Spirit. You see. So that's how we would know we're Israelites. That's how we would know what's coming. This is how we're able to go out on the highways and the byways, preach and prophesy and offer up this, this, this righteous sacrifice, all right, which is by faith, okay? We walk by faith and not by sight. Let's get that again, all right? Man. Let's get this one too. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Most High, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed unto the day of redemption. By what? The Holy Spirit, man. Okay. Oh, shit. It was in the same chapter. All right. The, again, the Lord has given us the understanding through the Holy Spirit, the earnest of the Spirit. All right, so now we can walk by faith and not by sight because we don't see the new bodies. We don't know what it entails. Okay, but through that Holy Spirit, we can now, all right, walk, all right, by faith and not by sight, man. Romans 8 and 24, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? <laughs> all right. 1 Corinthians 3 and 12, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Okay. Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. See. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen okay so ultimately i just wanted to get into that it's through the holy spirit of promise that we're able to understand and know we're israelites and know who we are and, and do the things we do all right it's not of our own will it's through the holy spirit and we damn sure wouldn't need a dna test okay it is the spirit that quickened it the flesh profited nothing okay let's see here Romans 4 and 16. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. 
All right. If we walk in the faith of Abraham, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. Okay. And ultimately, that's of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. And that it goes, you know, more into that. But I just wanted to touch on those things, man. Hopefully, y'all edified on to the next. Shalom.